What's up, guys? Today we got the 10 hottest females in Spyro the Dragon. Coming in at number 10, we have Sheila the Kangaroo. This spunky and exploratory mammal has got all of the right fixings for a lover in your heart. But does she have what it takes to really please a man? Well, I think no, because she's more of a companion than a lover. And for that reason, she gets number 10. Flying in at number 9, we have Juliet from Zephyr. Juliet is an interesting character because you'd think she's going to be some feminine princess, but by the time you actually meet them, you find out they have the same fucking voice as money bags, which really adds in a cool layer of kind of gay, trans ambiguity there, which I think is fucking tight. Then, to top it all off, they fly down to the fucking land blubber and then they have sex right then and there, so that earns it a spot on this top 10 list. Seriously, like our whole objective was just to get her to go down to him. All right, coming in at number eight, we have, and this one's going to surprise some of you, Elora. I know she's a big waifu for some of you guys. I could feel the hatred boiling in the comments, but hear me out. She is more of a, a guiding figure, a sort of almost like a paternal figure in Spyro's life. It's very much not like a sexual love interest until like the very end, very much like a confused step sibling wants to be a part of your life, but then you guys just end up fucking. Uh, I give her bonus points for that, but Elora is going to come in at number eight. Now, before I continue with this top 10 list, we have to address the elephant in the room. That's right, I'm talking about Cinder. The reason why Cinder did not make this list is because her original design intent, as I understand from reading the Spyro fandom wiki, which I am an expert in, is that she was supposed to be the anti-Spyro, the dark Spyro, this evil character shrouded in mystery. But then, after the developers went to several furry conventions, they decided that they had to ship this character and turn her into an over-feminized sexual object that frankly is disgusting to me. More seriously, I think they could have done a lot more with Cinder's character design, and as someone who has played none of the games that Cinder's from, she really doesn't speak to me on a personal or sexual level. For that reason, she does not make this list. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about number seven, the sorceress. This big BBW evil bitch has got a big ba dump -a donk kicking it in the back. I'd let her stab me with her scepter any day, possibly in my ass. Number six, that's right, I'm talking Gulp. Gulp is a big fat motherfucker and he doesn't let you get past Ripto for free, baby. You better get right through him and blow that shit up from the inside out. He's a big fan of fun and a big fan of body slamming. He also stopped me for two hours before I could complete my casual Spyro 2 playthrough. And for that reason, I give him a fuck you on this list. Keeping in line with our BBW theme, coming in at number five, we have the Big Mamas from Clifftown and Dr. Shemp. These big mamma jammas with sun-kissed skin and bright, flashy red dresses sure know how to have a great time, as signified by the amount of times they fucked Dr. Shemp, creating mini Shemps which they then throw at you and cast off of the side of a cliff. A cool little bit of sexual world building. Coming in at number four, we have the Hula Girls from Idol Springs. These chubby seamstresses sure know how to have a great time. I'd dance with them and participate in their blood ritual anytime. Number three, I'm going with the Mermaid Lady from Ocean Speedway. As you can tell, a lot of these picks are from Spyro 2. I guess the developers were particularly horny at that point in the series' architecture. But the Mermaid Lady, her name is Princess Great Butt job, Sex, Spyro. I believe, and she is a real excellent. looker. She just acts like she doesn't give a hoot. You know what I'm saying? And there's something kind of sexy about that. <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely do a couple of loop-de-loops around just to impress her, you know what I mean? Number two. And this is where things start to get serious. I'm talking about the fairies. Yes, all of the fairies. From stupid old Zoe at the save point, all the way to the old grandma fairies that lift you up in Lofty Castle. These fairies are based. You got to admit it. And you definitely were attracted to them as a kid. Don't lie to me. Get close to these fairies and they'll give you something to remember. And even leave you with a little something for the road. <laughs> Before we hit the number one spot on our list, I want to say that we have seen a lot of waifus on this list, but there are still many more, big and small, that have yet to be acknowledged. If you think I've missed anybody that deserves to be on this list, leave a comment down below and let me know who you jerk off to. Without further ado, I present to you, if you're a true Spyro fan, you already know... 
the number one spot on the hottest female Spyro list goes to Bianca. That's right. She's got everything you could want from a Spyro waifu, from an amazing character arc to a spunky dominatrix attitude with a soft spot. Not to mention, she fucked fireworks in Hunter's what? Factory. And for that reason, I'm going to go jerk off. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.